Hey everybody, I'm in here to do last Monday's Raw Review and this was August 30th, 2021. Now I know it took me a little minute to get to this and a lot of people did say this show was pretty good so I'm going to give my opinions on it. But let's start it off. So, the headline was Orton delivers a mighty RKO to Lashley after RK Bro retained their titles. That was the headline. Oh, what? So they didn't go. So they went straight to this. Real Ripley defeats Shannon Baszler. Hold on. Hold on. Because that ain't how the show started. I see. I'm just looking at the promos right now. Oh, yeah. Goldberg had a promo, too. Like, uh, talking about he's coming for Bobby Lashley's soul. Like, okay. Like, Goldberg, you're done. Nobody should care about you anymore. You got hurt. There is no point in you trying to keep this going. No bill. But anyways, the show, well, I'll talk more about this. The show did start off pretty crazy because it started off with Damian Priest challenging everybody out there, you know, to a title shot. Basically copying on Bobby Lashley, like what Bobby Lashley did like the week before. And then that's when, um, what happened? Then I think Sheamus came out, right? And Sheamus won revenge. He wants the title shot. Drew McIntyre comes out. He wants to throw himself in. Talking about he never had the belt, the United States champion belt. We'll talk about the downgrade for him. Then Bobby Lashley and MVP came out. And then they was talking about, oh, how we want the uh, United States belt. Talking about, oh, we'll put two belts on Lashley. It, it was getting crazy when it first started because of all the interruptions. And then RK Bro came out. And then they were saying they had challenged uh, Bobby and them for the tag titles. So we just... We just got belts going up all over the place in the men's division. And then that's when they came out and set a triple threat between Lashley, I mean, um, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Damian Priest. And then set up a tag match between RK Bro and Lashley and MVP. Okay, so the first match, I guess, was Real Ripley defeating Shayna Baszler. Okay, uh, I think Nia costed Shayna this match, so apparently they're still having, like, disagreements or whatever. Whatever you want to call it. I still find it pretty weird how they put them back together, knowing they split up without no real recognition. I mean, what, was it because Reginald left? I don't know. But anyways, Rhea picks up the win. Rhea has still been kind of over, even though she hasn't really been in a title situation like that now. Then you got the Viking Raiders defeat Jinder Mahal and Veer. So, yes, Jinder Mahal is now tagging up with his flukies now. And the Viking Raiders are back. I don't think we've seen them in a while. So, they had a match. And as you can see, the Raiders end up picking up the victory. So, damn, they're over Jinder Mahal and Veer, yo. <laughs> Jinder Mahal and them, man. What they going to do with the Viking Raiders? Are they going to try to get them a tag shot anytime soon? I just want to know. Are they? Then the United States champion, Damian Priest, defeats Drew McIntyre and Sheamus in the triple threat match. Now, this was a pretty good match, I will admit. It was cool. I was really wondering who was going to win because I was like, oh, man, you know they've been putting Damian Priest over like crazy. But now you got Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. And through it all, uh, uh, Damian Priest wins clean, man. I read a little bit of this. It says, all three men laid it all on the line, Co what? culminating in the Archer of Infamy. These damn names they be giving people. Earning the impressive victory after connecting with the reckoning to McIntyre, getting the pinfall over the former WWE champion, and retaining his United States title. Damn. They just got to throw that out there that he was WWF champion, even though that was like so long ago. They got to still use that. So, yes, they're putting Damian Priest over, man. The only disappointing thing about this Damian Priest is I felt like he just didn't really take no losses. Like, he fought a lot of the same people for the longest, getting wins over and over again, even in tag matches. Now he then picked up the United States Championship. You know, now they're just putting him in bigger matches. And, and, again, he's not really losing. Like, that's crazy. I guess that's the easy way out, just having the champion win. So, that is, like, the easy way out. But at the same time, he's still over. It's like, man, what is it? Then, I mean, he even coming at Bobby Lashley. So, something to watch with him. 
Dude drop render Eva Marie unable to compete. Now this was kind of goofy to me. I mean, yeah, they're still keeping the role. Like, yep, the Dude drop and Eva Marie finally went against each other. They finally went against each other. But this is just come on. Eva Marie gimmick is getting goofy. I mean, if y'all just gonna keep using Dude drop, but just having Eva do nothing, it's kind of just really getting lame. But yeah, Dude drop hit a couple moves on her, and then the ref came out and was like, "Oh, she's unable, unable to compete." Just like with Goldberg and other mugs, couldn't even just be a pin victory. Goofy, Eva Marie. At this point, I'm starting to feel like she just don't need to be here. If she ain't gonna be competing or doing nothing, and just getting obliterated like this. Come on now. And doing extra stuff behind stage, but then you get in the ring and it's just over before you even know it. Carrying across the feet, Humberto Carrillo. Carrillo. Um, okay, so carrying across is going up the ranks, I guess. I mean, Humberto um, don't really care too much. Don't really like carrying across that much. Uh, this wasn't really an interesting match to me, but the whole point of it is that Karrion Cross is just going up the cards. He he went from losing to now going up. He had it different than uh, uh, Damian Priest. Like I said, with Damian Priest, he just came out winning. He came out with bad money, and they just had him winning everything. Even had him winning tag team matches with bad money. Like I think he did win that one tag team match. But all right, let's move on. Nia, this is the match that everybody was talking about. Nia Jax defeats Raw Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. And this is supposed to be a contenders match, which doesn't make any damn sense at all, like I said. And people kept talking about this match. Now, when I watched this match, I did kind of feel like it was getting kind of ruthless. I don't know. I'm like, what, is it because they're two heels or whatever? I'm just like, yeah, man, this match did seem to get a little sloppy and out of control, if you ask me. And they ain't even going to mention it. If you read this, they won't even mention it. Nia Jax was out to take full advantage of her opportunity or the opportunity in action against Raw Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. It was a heated back and forth. Oh, they'll say it was heated, though. Back and forth battle that in the end saw the irresistible force pick up the win over the queen. So, yeah, Nia ended up getting the win in this one, too, which was kind of wild. Unexpected. I really thought Charlotte was going to win. Probably everybody else, too. But I don't know, everybody was talking about how Nia wasn't really selling right and was doing uh, bots and stuff. And Charlotte, they, they was talking about they was throwing real blows. Now, I don't know if it was kayfabe or not. It's a possibility. They said there was no beef behind stage. But the match did get kind of gritty. I'll put it like that. And Nia picks up a win after after acting a fool in that last match, too, with Rhea Ripley and Shayna. Uh, let's not forget Nikki Ash is on uh real side and nikki didn't even compete today i be feeling so sorry for nikki i swear they give too much hype to heels as champions i swear it's like the if you're a face and if you're a champion you're gonna get either played like bianca or you're just gonna get embarrassed like nikki you know you, heels as champion is something that they just don't like i mean faces as champion is something that apparently this company does not like at the moment Cause that is just ridiculous, man. This it's just heel champions, and then you see Becky turns heel. Like, oh gosh. Omos defeats John Morrison. Okay, I find this match to be kind of pointless. I thought y'all was a tag team, pointless match. Omos, I guess, is still looking strong. Gets the win over uh, John Morrison. Even though, yeah, they they did lie about some matches too last week. They said that Morrison was supposed to go against Miz. And they also lied about another match that they said was going to happen, never happened. And this was one of them. Then we got another pointless match. AJ Styles versus Xavier Woods. Okay, this is kind of pointless. Um, AJ picks up the win. Okay, i read a little bit. It says, looking to pick up where his tag team partner left off. AJ Styles was in action against the New Day's Xavier Woods. Where is Kofi Kingston at? But it was it was far from smooth sailing for the phenomenal one. Woods put forth an extremely valiant effort, but Styles ultimately came out on top after locking in the cab crusher for a submission victory. So he picked up. So Omos and AJ Styles both won in singles the night, that night. 
And then here we go with the main event. Raw Tag Team Champion RK Bro defeats WWE Champion Bobby Lashley and MVP. So, yeah, they end up losing. I figured they was going to lose. Once they said that MVP was in the match, I pretty much figured it right there. Like, yep, they're going to lose, and they're going to blame MVP for why they lost. They've been doing this a lot with Lashley. If they don't want Lashley to beat people in the ring, which they know they want him to do to most people, well, they'll just throw MVP in in some way, some manner to either F up the singles match or lose the tag match. And that's exactly what happened here. And yes, Bobby ended up taking the RKO like right after the match. But I'll read some. It says AJ Styles and Omos was, were a presence at ringside for the massive Raw main event. Oh, so they were there, huh? Like they're still competing. Raw, Randy Orton and Riddle had to do what they could to fight off the former Raw Tag Team Champions at ringside. Damn. And they were able to hold them off just long enough for Riddle to connect with a floating bro to MVP and retain the championship goal for RK Raw. Now, that would have been wild if they would have lost it. It was some stakes on the line in this match, for real. Following the win, WWE Champion Bobby Lashley attempted to take out the original bro, but Orton swooped in to deliver a massive RKL to the Almighty for his troubles. So, yeah. And there you go. That's the review. I mean, I didn't get to the promos like that. Like I said, Goldberg shot a promo. Dewdrop, Damian Priest, R Truth. That man, that's getting old too. R Truth and Akira Tozawa. How did it go from the ring to how this hot mess? I kind of liked it a little bit more when they was putting that twenty four seven by a belt in the ring. Um, some people might say this is great. I get this show a three out of five. It was all right. It wasn't super good to me because it's certain things that I just didn't really felt like made a lot of sense or didn't mean much especially with the sloppy nine match and the the do drop match was so pointless to me as well like come on that like what the way they built that no Alexa Bliss I see the, and a lot of people were missing right like I said no Alexa Bliss no Nikki Ash was competing it was some other folks missing as well, or that did not compete in tonight's match or tonight's uh, show. So, but there you go. The hype is still up for RK Bro. They are pushing RK Bro. They love him. The fans love him. They're pushing him. Even got him coming at the champion. So, yeah. How far will this team go before their differences in personality get the best of them? We'll have to see later. And you know, I'll be back on the SmackDown review as well. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit that like button. Tell me how you feel. And I will be back for the SmackDown review on Friday or Saturday whenever I come out with it. Peace out.